Be honest with them. This is a psych review, Benny, not a confessional. Now, if you tell them what's really on your mind, you're going to spend the rest of your career filling out traffic reports. Now, if I say mother to you, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? Father. Brother. Sister. Okay, that's good because it's the easy ones they can trip you up on. Mother, father, brother, sister. Mother, father, brother, sister. Mother, Ray, father, these people brother, are professional. Will they know if you've rehearsed your answers? Ah, they may suspect, but they won't be able to prove it. Now, I go in there unprepared, and they say, brother, and I say, naked? I'm going to be explaining myself away for the next two weeks. You'd say naked? Well, I'm talking hypothetically. Well, I'm sorry. It just sounded as though you were drawing upon personal experience. Well, you know, me and my brother, we used to take baths together when we were younger. But what's wrong with that? Well, nothing just seemed like an odd response. You see, you see, even you're reading stuff in this. You say something innocent like that, and the next thing you know, they're trying to convince you to have dreams of seeing your mother naked. You had dreams of your mother naked? I said brother. You said mother. I know what I said. I said brother. It's my dream. I should know who's in it. Well, how long have you been having this dream? There is no dream. I made it up. Well, I'm sure it doesn't mean anything, unit. right? All staff on fifth floor unit emergency. What's his name? He's a John Doe. Come on. Hi. How are we doing today? I can't find him. Who's that? Oh, man. I got to stop him. He's really going to hurt himself. Well, there's no one else out here. Yes, there is. I saw him. He was out here. I saw him out here. Well, maybe I can help. Don't go near him, Benny. He'll take you down with him. Oh, how? How? How are you going to help? Well, I'm a Mountie. A Mountie? Yeah, you don't look like a Mountie. Well, you know, the, the red uniform, it's really... Mostly for special occasions. Although they seem to insist that I wear mine more than you. You, that, you always get your man then. You know, that's, that's a popular misconception. It really isn't our motto. It was invented by a writer of an early black and white movie. Our actual motto is maintain the right, which admittedly Benny. may not be as... Uh, yes. Yes, we do often get our man. Okay. He told me mm -hmm. to meet him at the house. Mm -hmm. He wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And it's not my it's not my fault that I was late, because I missed the bridge. Well, that can happen. That's right. Huh? So you know where he is? Or you just tell him what he wants to hear. No, I don't. Well, then I am too late. He's down there. He's down there, isn't he? No, he's inside. I saw him inside. You saw time? Yes. You lied to me. But he's not here. You lied to me. Why did you lie to me? Look, you gotta stop him for me. You gotta find him for me, please. What are you gonna do, huh? Find time.
Come on, Frazier. He said he was looking for time. For all we know, he'd be looking for an article of clothing. Well, we start with what we know, Ray. We know from Elaine that John Doe was taken to the hospital after having been turned in by a bus driver. Yeah, five years ago. It's been almost that long since I was behind the wheel. You remember him? Hard to forget, poor guy. I rode my bus for weeks. He kept wanting me to take him to some house. Did you always drive the same route? Route number nine. Never understood what he meant, though. Seemed harmless enough. He in some kind of trouble? No. Yes. What did he do? Just ride it. One into the other, looking out the window. I never made him pay. It didn't seem quite right, seeing as I was never actually taking him anywhere. Anyway, my shift ends, and he wouldn't get off. Uh, I kept saying I had to take him there now. I reached over to take his arm, and he took a swing at me. Uh, he wouldn't get off no matter what. What can I do? I called the cops. Well, we don't have a record of any charges filed. <laughs> nah, I didn't have the heart to lock him up. The cops said they'd take him to the psych ward for 72 hours, check him out. I figured a couple, three days with some doctors probably doing some good. Well, he's been in there ever since. No ID, no name, no home, and possibly violent. He's one of the few that didn't dump back on the streets. Jeez. Do you remember where he wanted to go? No, uh, I don't know. Uh, Mark's house. Marty's house. Uh, it's been five years. Well, we appreciate your time. Listen, fellas, if I knew they were locking up, I never would have uh, made that call, you know? I mean, I might have just... Mike's house. I said you wanted to go to Mike's house. <laughs> I can't believe I remembered that. Human mind. Pretty wild thing, huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me, Fraser? Well, I told him I'd help. You tell that to everybody. So what are we gonna do? Sit on this bus until Ty gets on? You know, I looked into that man's eyes when I was on that ledge, Ray. I saw a man who was lost. You can lose your job, you can lose your home, and it can be devastating. But if you lose yourself, you have nothing. Frazier, the guy was looking for Mike's house on a bus that travels a 12-mile circuit. Do you have any idea how many Mikes live on this bus route? No. And neither do I, and neither does anybody. We're on the wrong bus. This is the number nine. Well, he couldn't find the house again because he was on the wrong bus. He needed to make a transfer. Oh, is that what it says there? Transfer here to Mike's house? No. He told us. He said he was late because he missed the bridge. Okay, let's say he transferred here. Seven bus routes pass over this bridge. How are we gonna know which bus he took? Excuse me, uh, can you take us to Mike's house, please? Don't you think you're being a wee bit desperate? Well, since he asked the bus driver to take him to Mike's house, he must have had reason to think that the bus driver knew where Mike's house was. Frazier, there's a guy in my corner who asks me every morning if I've seen God. Do you think he really expects me to point him out? Well, you know, if you did, Ray, perhaps he'd stop asking. Hey, excuse me, can you take us to Mike's house, please? He didn't seem to know where it was. Ah, here comes another one. Well, it did take seven tries, right? I'm telling you the guy's taking us for a ride. 
He has no idea where Mike's house is. He's probably going to drop us off in the middle of nowhere and laugh himself sick all the way back downtown. I wonder what Ty was doing that Mr. Doe felt he needed to stop. Frazier, the guy's insane. He'd be talking about Ty Cobb or Ty Babylonia. Maybe he wants her to stop figure skating, which, by the way, I prefer all men to stop doing immediately. This is your stop. Around the corner, first house on the right. You can't miss it. Thank you kindly. Yep, I can hear him laughing already. They must have moved. Explains why nobody's asked to go there in years. Do you know where Mike is? Uh, I think he was killed in the 14th century. Oh, great. So at least we got a murder investigation on our hands. Sit down, sit down. Take it to the church. St. Michael's halfway house for troubled juveniles. I thought that a little stuffy. Uh, apparently so did the rest of the kids. Now they just call it Mike's house. <laughs> the first one burnt down about four years ago. We couldn't afford to rebuild. So we just rented a place and opened up again. Too many of our young people are turning to crime. We tried to subtly put a little bit of spirituality back into them. If they don't see it coming, they may not know what happened. <laughs> I just wish it had happened for Ty. Was he a bad kid? No, just took the drugs. Showed great promise. Natural athlete. Look after his brother Walter. Now Walter made all city. Now there was a nice boy. Man? Yeah. Right. You know him? Yes. Do you know where we could find Ty? He died about five years ago. I'm sorry. Well, thank you, Father. You've been a great help. You're welcome. Oh, so uh, how did he die? Suicide. Climbed out on the ledge of his apartment. Jumped. Walter took it very hard. Blamed himself. He was late. Yes. Got home from work a few minutes after it happened. Poor lad, I haven't seen him in years. Hope he's doing well. If you see him, tell him to drop by. I will. Thank you, Father. God bless. So what are you going to tell him? Well, I don't know if you'll hear it, but I own the truth. And his brother died five years ago, and there never was anyone on that ledge. This concrete is white. Oh, it's a color we like to use for sidewalks in America. You know, the Inuit have 60 words to describe snow, right? One third of them concern the color. Eskimos don't have a lot to do in the winter, huh? You compare this patch with the rest, I think you'll discover this area has been bleached. And recently. Someone was on that ledge, Ray, and they ended up here. Look, 
just let it go, okay? Frazier, his brother killed himself and then he went nuts. Now, I feel for the guy, but overly clean cement is not enough evidence I to I think open... he saw someone on that ledge, Rain. A similarity between the incidents made him believe that it was his brother's... This guy is crazy. Delusional people don't simply make things up. Yes, they do. That's the unique quality that makes them delusional. No, no, what I mean is that their delusions are usually grounded in something drawn from the real world. They may be distorted, they may be exaggerated, they may be juggled, they may be romanticized. All right, all right. If somebody jumped, where's the body? Well, I'm sure it'll show up. Back here. They just fished a body out of the Chicago River near Michigan. Lieutenant says he'll meet you down there. On the way. Look, that doesn't prove anything, okay? Bodies turn up every day in this city. No, I'm sure that's the case. Oh, all right. What's your theory? The guy jumped from the fifth floor of the hospital, caught a thermal updraft, and flew to 16 blocks to the river? Well, that's just silly, Ray. It's a joke. Ah, uh, morning, Lieutenant. You know, I was trying to figure out why I missed you so much yesterday afternoon. Then I realized you weren't there. Now, perhaps you could explain, Detective, how an entire working day could go by without you doing any actual police work. No, uh, a missing person, sir. Who? Ty. Ty. Yes, sir. Babylonia? Uh, no, sir. Ah, it's too bad. We don't see enough of her anymore. Ah, uh, no, we don't, sir. You are aware we have a naked corpse over there? Ah, uh, yes, I am, sir. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll go check that out, sir. Good thinking. Got a cause of death? You want to know before tomorrow? Talk to a gypsy. All right, look, just do me a favor. You see the Mountie over there? Tell him the guy drowned. Forget it. Come on, there's no law against lying to Canadians. I'd owe you one. Like you'd ever have something I'd want. It would appear he was dead before he hit the water. You haven't even looked at the body yet. Good morning, Dr. Pearson. Uh, am I right? The ice maiden ain't talking. You're right. Now, look, I'm saying that he jumped off the bridge and died in impact. Although I doubt he would have taken off his clothes before jumping. Multiple fractures, 20, 21, possibly 23 broken bones. You hit water from high enough, it's like landing on pavement. By high enough, you mean... A lot higher than that bridge. And if he did land on concrete... Maybe 50 feet? Five stories. It's the exact height of that ledge. Thank you. Diefenbaker. Diefenbaker, come. Uh, I'm terribly sorry about this, but you see, in the village where he grew up, there were very few people with blonde hair. And as a result, ever since we've come to Chicago, he's been, how shall I put this, transfixed. Anyway, that's not the problem. The problem is that he has a tendency to take advantage of situations. You cannot expect her to give you a lift home just because the others did. Dr. Pearson is a very busy person. Oh, no, I'd be glad to. Although it's very kind of you, but you see, that would play right into his tendency to manipulate. It's no problem. Well, thank you, Dr. Pearson. Esther. Esther Pearson? You wouldn't in any way be related to. No. No. Of course you wouldn't. Thank you kindly. Ray. Whoever dumped that body didn't want us to know who he was or where he came from. Oh, Frazier, I'm begging you, please. There's something going on inside that hospital, Ray. You're crazy. That's a good idea.
So you're a Mountie, are you? A uh, constable, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, yes. Here in Chicago? Well, you see, I used to live in the Yukon, but I uncovered a plot that involved drowning caribou, and then some men who were dressed in white came after me with homicidal intentions. It's a rather long story. It takes exactly two hours to tell, but the upshot of it is that I was sent here. I think I embarrassed some people in the government. Do you have anyone who can vouch for you here? Well, yes, there's my wolf. Although I'm not sure he would vouch for me. If you know anything about lupine behavior, you know how moody they are. And on top of that, he's deaf. Name? I'd rather not say. couldn't stop him and uh, I should have been there John you couldn't stop something from happening that didn't happen no no he was there no, I, I saw him out there John do you remember when you first came here do you remember what you said I think I gotta do something. It's your file, John. Take a look at it. You see what it says there? It says you were looking for Ty and you wanted to stop him. Yes, but you see, I, I saw him uh, yesterday. I saw him yesterday. Look at the files, John. That was five years ago. He couldn't have been out there, not yesterday, not the day before. problems with him. Our problem is with your drug. Five suicides now. That's totally unacceptable in a sample of 50. 45 patients with marked improvement. I prefer to see the glasses half full. Did you think this is a joke? Uh, no. Well, what I think is that you are overreacting. Overreacting? We have a body dumped in the river and I... How the hell did I let this happen? How many manic depressives are in this country? I don't want to hear this speech again. You know as well as I do that nothing, not a drug out there, can help them as much as this one has helped those people in there. What? It's killing them, for God's sakes. Five people have taken their lives. Five people who had suicidal tendencies before you ever put them on this drug. You know that. There is nothing in the material that links 80, 40 oh, We're with... writing the material, and we keep sanitizing it. Every death is just swept under the rug. The trials will be over soon. In two weeks, we'll go to the FDA. It'll be out of your hands. Sure, it'll go on to kill how many more people? You know damn well that even if they approve it tomorrow, this thing won't hit the market for another two years, and by then, we'll reduce the risk factor to acceptable levels. But if we have to start over again, my company can't afford another five years of testing. We'll go under. 
And with us will go a drug that could have done a hell of a lot of people a hell of a lot of good. And your stock won't be worth a damn thing. Who knows about the jumper? Just one of the psychiatric assistants. Danny? Yeah. Well, he's a good man. I'll take care of him. Okay. He was a John Doe, right? Yes. Then find another one. Give him the same patient number. Fifty patients need to come through this test, Will. Fifty living patients. It's only two more weeks. You find me a John Doe. take away your privileges. Well, what privileges might those be? You want to keep wearing that hat? I'd prefer to. Then you be a good boy no. and take all of your medicine. No. So I shall. Shh. Don't take your feet off the ground. Okay. You take your feet off the ground, they can kill you. Really? They've been trying to kill me for years, but I sleep with my feet on the ground. Proper souls, they insulate against electricity. You're absolutely correct. I know. Hi. Hi. You're the guy from the ledge. Yes. And I would prefer that no one else knew. You're a patient here. I was admitted for evaluation. All right. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Who was it you saw on that ledge? You'd rather not talk about <laughs> this. Listen, you just got here, okay? So you don't know anything, believe me. I've been here a long time, man. I just wanted to get better and get out. Are you? Or are I what? Getting better. It doesn't matter what I think. I would have thought that's the only thing that matters. Don't worry about him. Doesn't know what he knows. Yeah, you don't look like Winston. Well, I'm not. You're on his spot. That That is Winston's spot. What happened to Winston? He wouldn't tell them his name. They killed him. He took his feet off the ground. You stand in his spot. They take you to the blue room. There's no blue room. But don't listen to me. I don't know what I know. Actually, I don't know what I know neither. Shuffle. Oh, right. Here you go, John. There, that's it. Hi. Who are you? I'd rather not say. It's John Doe. And no, uh, there must be a mistake here. No, 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 no. It's right here. Number 36. No. 
Nobody tells me anything. Bye. Can you tell me where the blue room is? Oh, sorry, there's no blue rooms on this ward. Only beige. It's supposed to be calming. Yo, whoa, whoa, whoa. Drink your water. The whole thing. Ice Maiden finally served up an autopsy report in the John Bell by the river. Cause of that? He was struck by a blunt object, probably a sidewalk. And the pharmacology report turned up something interesting in his system. The ME called it some kind of MAO inhibitor. No buzz, so no street value. Prescription? FDA has no record of it, completely unregistered. I think I know what it is. that been in there? Two and a half hours. Don't those things dissolve? The key is to control your saliva ducts. They've been giving this to every patient on the ward. All right. Here, just put it in there. I'll check it out. Well, so how's the food? your question do you know how long you've been in here I'm insane not stupid sorry yeah today I know can we talk about time what was Winston like Quiet. He never talked. Paranoid. Oh. So what happened to him? Why are you asking us all these things? You're here. You see things. I know where it is. What's that? Kramer. He went to the blue room. You don't know anything. So where's Kramer then? Don't go to the blue room. Is that where Winston went? I told him not to take his feet off the floor. There is no blue room. What do you know? You're delusional. Can you show me where it is? You believe me? Yes. You're scaring me. I'll go with you. Come on, come on. Feet on the floor. Right. You're wasting your time. This is the blue. Come here, come here. This is it. That's right. 
said something and I was just trying to remember where I heard it. My father used to quote it. It's from Hamlet. I am but mad north northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know the difference between a hawk and a handsaw. You are helping them, you know. People see things. Sometimes they do, but that doesn't mean that they're real. That doesn't mean that it happened. Well, I'm not sure about that. Quite often I see things that nobody else seems to. Well, that's why you're here. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. Curious thing, reality, isn't it? Yeah. So much of the time, it just seems to be a matter of what you believe. If a lot of people believe in something, then that becomes reality, at least for them. And then some people find it easier to make a new reality. Especially if the truth is too painful. But I think you know that, don't you, Walter? That who I am? No, that's just your name. Walter Sparks. But I don't need to know your name to know who you are. Well, I'm not who you think I am. It wasn't your fault. Yes, it was. I was late. Time made his own decision. Yeah, sometimes that's clear. Sometimes it is, but sometimes I think, uh, 
Uh, probably would have been easier if I'd killed myself. Maybe it would have been. You know, my mother died when I was very young. I don't remember a lot about that time except, except my father's beard. I don't remember him crying or talking about her. I just woke up one morning and I noticed he had a beard. And it kept getting longer and longer, and he got thinner, and he stopped going to work. My mother died, <clears throat> and my father stopped living. And then one morning I woke up, and... There was a breakfast waiting for me at the table. Oatmeal and uh, sliced banana. And he was clean shaven. And he was crying. Well, your dad was a very strong man. He just woke up, and the wind was from the south. And he found he still knew the difference between a hawk and a handsaw. being painted, you can meet me here. Got the lab results back on those pills. You were right, it's the same drug. They must be conducting clinical tests here. The man you pulled out of the river, his name was Winston. The drug was connected to his death, and I think they're covering it up in order to falsify test results. And what I haven't been able to figure out is where the blue room is. Somehow it's associated with the deaths. Okay, only one problem with your theory. The lab says no way the drug is lethal. Worst case, it may cause some depression. I didn't listen to what they were telling me. Well, I did, but I, I, I listened with my eyeballs. You know, you're really beginning to scare me. You know, Ray, all communication is a code of one kind or another if you don't understand the language. Well, it makes no sense. They weren't talking about the color blue. They were talking about the emotion. The drug causes depression. They went into the blue room. They killed themselves. Okay, I'll be back in 20 with a warrant. Ray, who did you tell you were coming here? Oh, nobody. Why? I misunderstood the question. I told everybody I know. I told the state's attorney. I told the sheriff. I even told my mother. Another John Doe? All right. I don't think they're really painting the visiting room, Frazier. treatment. I don't react well to shock treatment. Calm down, Ray. They're not going to do anything like that. They're going to kill us. Yeah, well, to most people, those would be contradictory thoughts. He's a real Mountie. 
And his pals are real caught. Yes. Yes, they're under control. No. No, I'm not going to do that. Covering up suicides, I can somehow rationalize, but not murder, no. You have to think of something else. Yes. I'll, I'll be waiting. Coward. It would appear to be a soundproof room. You got a better plan? Yes. Relax. That's a plan? The more you struggle, Ray, the tighter it becomes. All you have to do is relax completely. Dislocate your shoulder. Pull your arm out of the sleeve. Yeah, or you come up and yell. Oh, yeah, that would work, too. Hang on one second. A dead bolt. Keyless entry. Sealed frame. Hinged from the outside. No windows in the sealed door. You might as well just leave my straitjacket on. Well, if something got in with the door being locked, we should be able to get outside. Oh, did something get in? Yes. Air. In spite of being in a hermetically sealed room, we haven't suffocated. You know, there's only one problem with that. We're a lot bigger than air. is flowing through the padding. I sharpened my buckle. You anticipated cutting your way out of a rubber room? You started, Martins. Bolted shut. Well, Archimedes said, Give me a fulcrum and a lever long enough, and I can move the world. I want nothing to do with this. You're in, Doc. The appropriate time to put a battle with your conscience has long since passed you by. Why do I always have to be the fulcrum? Stop moving, Ray. You're dispersing the energy. They were here. They were locked in. Where does that go? They'll discover we're missing in a matter of minutes, maybe less. By the time we got back with a warrant, there'll be no evidence left to seize. Come on. you wouldn't miss the keyboard. Well, although I saw the nurse type in the password, I didn't actually see it. Watching with your ears, were you? Well, yes, you see each finger 
applies a different pressure to the key, so each sound is slightly different. Of course, that varies from person to person. Well, what did this one sound like? Something like the tune to I've Been Working on the Railroad. They haven't left the building. I had to post an extra man on each exit. Okay, we got this. All right, people, back in your rooms. Deceased in the medical histories. Good, now we can get out of here if we can. Oh, maybe not. You boys just got yourselves a trip to the blue room. People get hurt here. All right, come on, step aside, people, step aside. Now, nothing's happening here. Nothing's happening here. Get back to your beds. Hey, I'm a cop. Do something. Back to your beds. They want to kill us. Me too. Come on, do something. I'm confused, right? Back to your beds. Step aside, people. Who are you taking them? No, we're not. Just step aside. No, you're taking them somewhere. Look, nothing is happening here. Now you're getting better, John. Don't start imagining things again. Trust me. Trust what you see, Walter. Do you really want to spend the rest of your life in here? Back to your bed. Thank you. 
He's finishing up. You can go on down. Thank you, Father. That kill, huh? Are you Catholic? Ian says this place has never been so clean. Yeah, I guess I'm a little bit compulsive. How are you? Good. I'm doing okay. I miss Ty. I think for the first time I really miss Ty. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's good funny way it means uh, I kind of have him back again. I'd rather miss him than forget him, anyway. Directions on this map, but you're only going one. 